Today, we're learning how to corner. Flat corners, berm corners, and even flat berm corners. I say we're learning because I was lucky enough to get Jay from Roots MTB to coach me. He's an expert coach that's not only a coach for people like us, but he coaches other mountain bike coaches. That's how good he is. And to see how much improvement I make, we'll be timing me on a short trail that's full of turns before I practice, and then we'll time me at the end to see that progress. So let's get into how to corner a mountain bike. Okay, so today I am going to work on cornering because I suck at cornering. Like, I've always thought that that's my main weak spot, and I have a feeling probably most people have that as their main weak spot, and they, whether they know it or not. Yeah, that's a very good point. Whether they yeah. know it or not is probably <laughs> the, the key piece of that. Most people, uh, as a coach, I love teaching cornering. It's by far the most useful thing I can teach you and the most beneficial thing I can teach you in that everywhere you go throughout the country, every trail has corners. Uh, there is no bigger kind of differentiating factor in terms of speed uh, on the trail other than corners. So where do we start with just, should we just do the basics first? Or? Yeah, I would probably start with flat corners just because that's where, that's the, I would say the harder of the two corners versus berms. Yeah. Um, however, flat corners, there is uh, a ton of controversy as to what the best techniques are. A lot of coaches teach this in different ways. We teach it very similar to berm cornering. However, a flat corner is much harder. Okay, well, let's start with flat corners. Okay. I'll do one uh, without any coaching, and you can tell me how terrible I am. Awesome. <laughs> I look forward to it. All right. <laughs> let's, let's do go. it. On the right track. Before. So what I would do here is when you get to this first set of cones, get down into a ready position so your elbows are out and your chest is down by your handlebars. The reason being, because you're standing so tall, it doesn't allow you to lean the bike because you're already at your maximum kind of height, right? Yeah. As you come in, don't adjust your feet. See how your foot, your outside foot went down, your yeah. inside foot came up? Keep them as flat as you can. Yeah. This is where the controversy comes in. <laughs> but yes, but we'll explain it too. There is one thing that is um, always up for debate, and that's whether or not you keep your outside foot down or you run through the corner, ride through the corner with level pedals. There are plenty of times when I take a corner with my outside foot down, but it's mainly because I know the corner and it's easier. Uh, this is an easier position than taking the corner with level pedals and leaning the bike. When you think about it, <clears throat> If your foot's at six o'clock, as I push down on the pedal, as I'm taking a right-hand corner, the bike just comes up into my body, okay? The reason this is a problem is now you're kind of fighting to keep that lean of the bike while trying to keep pressure on your pedal. If you do the same thing with your pedals level, now my pedal's at about three o'clock and I press down into it, you notice the bike doesn't go anywhere. It stays in that same angle and you can still uh, apply pressure to both the front and rear tires, which keeps uh, that traction throughout the whole corner. So I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong. However, there is a difference between the two. Uh, and like I said before, there are plenty of times when I put an outside foot down in a corner. However, it's a great practice to be able to keep your pedals equally weighted and balanced through the corners. I bet you'll be just as fast and just as efficient uh, in your riding. Low ready. So that's where I want you to start. If anything, your elbows could go forward this way. That forces your, your weight forward. See how you, oh, like you throw your shoulders forward? Uh -huh. Do it with your arms, not your pushing your head and shoulders forward. So just bring them up like this more. Really? Yep. That much? Yep. Oh, just so you can fully. The more you exaggerate, you're not gonna end up like that. But if I teach you here, ah. you'll end up here. But I guess here's, here's why we're doing it. We need to keep traction on your front tire. Okay. Most people tend to sit back, especially if they're oh, descending in a corner. The problem is you're losing traction on that front wheel. Okay. If you stay forward, you have a lot more bite on this, so this wheel. This. Yeah, so that was your best one. Okay. So, so now I want you to change your forward foot and try it again. So go left foot forward. Yep. Oh. Eh. Oh. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> okay, starting nice and low, your lean's awesome. Okay, you're nice and leaned over, your hips are to the right side. But you notice, oh, okay. now you can lean better that way yeah. than you can lean the other way, even though it's more comfortable for you. See how your saddle oh. passes behind your knee a little bit? Yeah. That makes it much easier 
Oh, so you to lean want, the bike. You want whatever side you're leaning toward, you want that knee forward. But it doesn't have to be that way. Just more importantly, gotcha. that you know the difference as to why it doesn't yeah. work one so way versus the other. Keep that in mind when you're yeah. coming through. Like it might hit your saddle. Right. As you get this big lean, the difference between this and in a berm is now we have to lean away from the bike. In a berm, we're gonna lean with the bike and use that wall to carry our speed. For a flat corner, we don't have that. So as we go around the corner, Corner, there's minimal steering, but our hips start to rotate to the outside. So as long as my hips and shoulders stay here, I still have tons of traction on the on the both tires. As soon as I start to lean with it, the tire starts to slide out from underneath me. The more we lean the bike, with the less we have to steer. The less we have to steer, the faster we go. So get down in that ready position again. Remember, elbows are a little bit forward. Okay, so this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lean your bike to your right. And I want you to counterbalance by keeping your hips and your shoulders square to me. Ready? It's going to your right. Okay, further. <laughs> this is why we get low. Okay. All right. So, now change your forward foot. Now I'm going to move you to the right again. Same thing. Same thing. Feel the difference? Oh, well, yeah. Pulling your leg in. Yeah. So, if you oh, find weird. yourself in that position, move your weight forward a couple inches. Oh, and you can get See the difference? Oh, okay. Yeah. Again, this is just teaching you why it doesn't work as easily to one yeah. size as it does the other side. I've never even noticed that <laughs> before. When you get comfortable with this, you'll start to take these, like not a full radius corner, like a 90 degree turn by just doing this. Okay, so before we get into how to ride berms, let's just summarize what we just learned for flat corners. Number one, chest down and elbows out. Number two, keeping your weight forward. Number three, keep your pedals flat. Number four, eyes on the exit. We didn't really go over this one, but it's definitely an important factor to remember. Number five, the more you lean, the less you steer. The less you steer, the faster you'll go. Number six, lean the bike, not your body. Number seven, be conscious of your seat. If you're turning to the side that has your foot in the back, just shift yourself forward a few inches so that the seat can pass behind your knee. So now that we've got some things to work on with flat corners, let's get into how to ride a berm. To start off, I went ahead and did a lap on this small trail with five corners in it before learning anything from Jay. The time I got was 18 seconds. So after the lesson, we'll come back and time me again on this trail and see how much I've improved. All right, so now we're talking about riding berms. Now this is a little bit different than what we did before with our flat corners, because now we're gonna be leaning with the bike as opposed to separating from it. You'll have a lot more traction in a berm because you're pressing right into a wall, okay? So again, we wanna come into this with equally weighted balanced pedals. As you get into the first, very very first part of the corner, it's always good to check and see where the exit is. Usually with these flow trails, you have a pretty good view of where the trail is going to exit. I want you to stay right in the middle of this berm all the way around. Anytime that you are riding berms, you can usually see where the best path is going to be. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should follow the path that every other rider is doing, but generally you want to stay in this middle third of the berm all the way around. Getting up a little too high and you get into some of this uh, rougher terrain and you run the risk of pushing your front tire over the edge which is never a good thing but staying too low and now you get into some of this loose stuff and that will make it much harder to uh, keep your traction as you go around the corner so stay right in the middle of this track just like you would on a pump track okay this will again start with equally weighted balanced pedals a nice deep ready position but as we go into this and we're looking for our exit we don't have to do as much of this separation from the bike we're going to be leaning down in with our shoulders and following that position all the way through the exit super fast but this is where you get tall see how you get tall yeah well, you're getting a little tall here when you transition from here right there to here to there so you're almost straight up again yeah but that looks plenty fast you're hitting the angle right yep. that's the, that's a picture we're looking for when people are riding berms See. Push, 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 push. See, that's what you want though, because this is what we're trying to get the cross, is that your position doesn't change. Okay, just holding through the whole thing. Yep. 
right did you, there. Did you feel like you? I was, felt. Yep. I felt like I was skidding out a bit. <laughs> I feel that every time, right there. Well, see what you could do to adjust that. Now that what you've learned today, what would you do to adjust the skid? Uh, it looks like I'm leaning too much. It yeah. Looks like I need to come up a bit. So now you you kind of compensate by putting your hips a little bit further to the outside, but you can wait and do it oh. at the end. What they say is, um, I've heard, is wiping your butt on the berm to help you remember oh. which way to put your hips. Right. <laughs> so by pushing to that side, yeah. even though your your bike's at that sharp sharp angle, that still puts pressure in the nose knob. So you don't just do berm corners this way and you do flat corners this way. There's a range of both. What Jay just said right there. I I'd never really heard or thought about before, but he's right. That was fast, man. Most of the time, you're never really riding a corner that's 100% flat or 100% berm. Just like this corner here, Jay is saying ride the first section like a berm, but as the berm starts to mellow out, then you need to shift your hips out like you're riding a flat corner. Same with this berm here that I have always had trouble with. You can see it's definitely not flat, but it sure as hell isn't as walled up as the berms we were just riding on. So do you ride it like a berm or do you ride it like a flat section? Well, of course, the answer again is both. Oh, on this one, Jay instructed me to ride the first section like a berm, and at the very end, to not only ride it like a flat section, but remember this whole thing? Well, here he's telling me to actually put my outside foot down so as to utilize how it will bring my bike back up from being in that berm position. So at the last second before the trail is totally flat and straight again, I slam my foot down to get brought back in that upright position. Pretty freaking cool, right? Learning all of this has brought a brand new found respect for people who can ride corners well. And on that note, I'm sure you're wondering how much better did I get from practicing with Jay? Well, I will tell you right after I say a huge thank you to this video sponsor, Bikes Online. As you probably guessed, Bikes Online is essentially an online bike shop. They stock a huge range of products that are absolutely excellent, just like the Siskiyou T8 I'm riding here from Polygon. And I know buying a bike online may seem daunting, and I've definitely wanted to cry when I got a brand new bike in the mail that I either had to completely assemble for three hours, or I don't even have the tools to do it, so I end up taking it to a bike shop. But Bikes Online sends you the bike 90% assembled. So right when you get your brand new bike, you've only got about 10 minutes of work until you're riding it on the trails. On top of that, if you don't like the bike, no sweat. They'll let you return the bike for free in the first 14 days if you don't love it. That's a full refund, and they even come pick it up from you free of charge. But I will say, I highly doubt you're going to be disappointed with anything you get from them. I love every single Polygon bike I've gotten so far. Anyway, go check out bikesonline.com now through the link in my description. Okay. So after my lesson with Jay, I went back out the next day and practiced probably about eight laps with all of that newfound info in mind. And on the last lap, I got 14 oh, yeah. seconds. That's the best one, I think. That's four seconds off the fastest time I could do before with barely any practice. It's like a 25% speed boost from knowledge alone, which is absolutely amazing. So before we all forget Jay's advice for berm riding, let's recap some of that knowledge. Number one, lean with the bike. Number two, keep your pedals flat. Number three, stay in the attack position. Number four, eyes on the exit. Number five, ride the middle third of the berm. Number six, stay in the attack position between transitions like this one. That's most of the notes on berm riding specifically, but I'd say the biggest piece of advice that ties this all together is that in most quartering scenarios, you're going to have to combine a bit of both riding styles to really attack a corner. So it's definitely in all of our best interest to practice both. I hope you guys got as much out of this as I did. Jay is a phenomenal coach that you can actually hire if you'd like. Simply message him on Instagram at Roots Mountain Biking or go to his website, rootsmountainbiking.com. He also has videos on YouTube that you should definitely check out. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.